Private practice fans, welcome to Wednesday. Yay! Okay, it's getting tough not having my practice manager around. Now, while I say that, our surrogate practice manager, Paula, who's been around for ages, who doesn't work full time for us, is doing an awesome job keeping on top of the things. But it's not the same as having the person inside the office with me, able to anticipate my freaking outness. Um, this is one of the reasons why I needed to move away <laughs> from having a virtual assistant because virtually an assistant couldn't read my mind and it actually takes people a little bit of time to be in my space and around me to understand my behaviours and how my behaviours relate to my stress levels. So I needed to move beyond the virtual. But that's okay. Sophie's allowed to have a birthday and a holiday and she'll come back next week all refreshed. And I may be under her desk in the fetal position. No, I'll be fine. It's just amazing. When you are used to having another person around you full time and you've built your capacity to, so my capacity as me as a human being and my capacity in my business to accommodate another full time person, it's amazing what happens when that resource is taken away. So, Moral to the story, I definitely need a full-time practice, practice manager here. There we go. Huh. So the printer did survive. We did get on very well. And I did learn that if I read instructions, I work out how to replace the toner. There we go. Point taken. I just hate reading instructions and I want things fixed immediately. In fact, I don't want things to need replacing. It's that simple. I say the same thing about my computer technology, my car, and my groceries. Can anyone else relate? I'm just going to assume you're all going, of course, Joe. nobody wants to take advantage of any of those things. <sighs> so it has felt like a bit of a grind today, mainly because I have been head down in reports. I have finished the first draft of the report I started last week, nine and a half hours to get me here, people. I still need to proofread it and edit it and proofread it and edit it and then send it off for some more proofreading and editing. I only proofread and edit my own work twice and then I still need somebody to help fix those mistakes that I don't see. At the moment, it's sitting at around 15 pages <laughs> and there's actually two reports because it was really long. So I went, how can I make this easy for the people going to receive it? So I've turned it into two reports. I'm going to feel great when it's done. And I'm not replacing that particular client with a similar client for a while. That's just hard work. I've also been proofreading the reports of other people in my business today. And I always dread doing that because I never feel like I'm good enough to proofread. I can't proofread my own work. How can I proofread the work of others? But what I'm very, very good at doing is helping people tell the story that needs to be told in a document and making sure that their decision making and their clinical reasoning is actually shown throughout the document. So I've become very, very good at that. It's a, it's a style of forensic writing that I've, I've been taught over many years of getting it wrong. Ha <laughs> ha! Nothing like that little level of learning experience. So I wanted to speak some more into playing small today. I had a coaching session with someone this morning and it was pretty tough. It's, she's gone through some tough stuff, but been thinking about her all day and wanting to love on her a lot today. But it got me thinking about the types of things that will encourage us to stay small or play small. And I think as health professionals, most of us want to know that we're liked. We want to know that we're needed. We want to know that we're important. And as we start to grow and develop in our professional confidence, personal confidence, our business success might start to take off or we might start charging more, we might start seeing a different type of clientele or doing work a little differently. You will find that there are other people in your world who don't want to come on that journey with you. This can be heartbreaking and gut-wrenching. And if you're not ready for it and can't see it for what it is, it will keep you small. It's, it's not too dissimilar to why a lot of us stay, have stayed in relationships that have been unhealthy for as long as we have because it's known, it's what we're used to, it's what we're comfortable and the idea of the unknown and potentially being alone is terrifying. But there will be people who will come into your world or who are in your world right now who don't want to see you grow. They might say all the awesome things about 
Go you, you've got this, rah you, you're awesome, until they start saying things like, what about your kids? Don't you want to be a better mother? Ha ha. Uh, why do you think you can charge so much? So this has happened in my team where my team members have been challenged by other service providers. What makes you think you can charge so much for your services? I was so mad. I just, well, I really, I was ready to hurt someone because I was like, how dare you say that to my team members? You say that to me first and we can charge that because we are damn good at what we do. We are, it is hard pressed to find people like us doing the work that we do in Australia. I am just going to be that out there about it. There's lots of people doing similar type of work, but not the way we do it. And that's okay. But those people, there are people who don't refer to us anymore. There are people who don't want to work with us anymore because they didn't want the growth journey that we were on. They liked us where we were when it was small and contained, when it was predominantly just me and I had a caseload of 35 and I wasn't sleeping and I would spend all weekend trying to write medical legal reports and have my migraines and flip out every time I took a holiday. That for them made them feel safe. They didn't know this stuff was going on underneath the surface. They were just expectant of getting me and a lot of me. So as you grow and as you develop, some people will come with you and some people need to part ways with you. <laughs> yes, Beck McMurray, they pay for the privilege of our help very, very much so. When you're parting ways with someone, it's supposed to hurt. We, we care and most of us are incredibly loyal. If you're watching this, chances are you've got an incredible amount of loyalty. And if you've had people in your world that have been with you since you were really little right through to now, to not have them in your world anymore is going to hurt. It's really going to hurt. So we've got choices to make. We can continue to let these people dictate our size or our capacity. So playing small isn't just about size, it's also about capacity. But we can also encourage them to come on the journey with us or we can change the way we relate to them. I'm not about cutting people off. That doesn't sit right with me, but sometimes it happens and sometimes that happens naturally. And sometimes people need a good prune, as in, we need to go. But I'm going to trust that you're wise enough to be able to make those decisions yourself and can navigate your own relationships that way. I do not want anyone turning up on this call tomorrow afternoon telling me that they are leaving their long-term <laughs> partnered relationship because of something I said in this video today. That's not what I'm saying at all. <laughs> okay. What I am saying is we can have a tendency to want to shrink back when the people around us don't get the growth journey we're on. And if you speak to anybody who has the type of success that you aspire to or the type of lifestyle you aspire to, I assure you that if you spent five, ten minutes with them and asked that question, have you had to leave people behind, they would probably go, yeah, there are people who did not come with me on this journey. I can assure you there are people in my world who have not come with me on this journey and it makes me sad. But I wasn't prepared to stay little and small and lacking in capacity because I know I'm built for more. I still have dreams, desires and aspirations in me. I know I'm built for more and until that stops, I don't stop. So words of advice, <laughs> words of wisdom around playing small for you this week. I'm looking forward to talking into this a little bit more tomorrow. I hope that you are getting through your week really well. For anyone who's interested, I did catch up on all my progress notes yesterday, all my clinical notes. I did go to bed with them all done. I felt really good about that. I've got two more reports to proofread for anyone who's watching that what's joe doing with reports one of them is mine that makes me happy and um we've had more business come in this week and the issue is i don't have anyone who can take on the referral whoopsie ha <laughs> ha that's what happens when you're good at what you do don't you think Alrighty, people, looking forward to talking to you again tomorrow. If you've got questions about what I've spoken about today, if you're concerned about a relationship that's going on in your world, please take the time to reflect 
on where you're at in your growth journey. Please take the time to think about how the people in your world are serving you. This is not a chance to get rid of all the people in your world and go find new people. It's a chance for you to reflect on where you're at and how you want to relate to the people who are important to you in your world. There we go. Looking forward to speaking to you again tomorrow. Until then, go be your awesome self.